This is my favorite GB of the new launch so far. Many of you asked about unfolding the regular 9070, so let's do a quick follow-up. Welcome to Machines and More. Seems like many of you found the 9070 XT undervolting video helpful. Glad to see that. We'll do another one today. Judging from the comments in the other video, it looks like a lot of folks had a good experience finding some cards at the MSRP from Micro Center here in the US. Unfortunately, online, uh, you know, hit or miss feedback. And our European friends, I'm really sorry. Uh, it seems like many of you had a rough experience. So, But for many of you that were successful grabbing a 9070 or 9070XT, I know that many of you were curious about the 9070 tuning. So that's what I'm going to do today. First thing to know is that unlike the 9070XT, the 9070 is actually already in a good place when it comes to power efficiency. And at these power levels, it's less imperative to lower the power. So most cases can handle the 220 or 230 watts out of the box, but you might think if you can, why not, right? So I'll show you how to explore the undervolting potential of your card. One thing to note up front, I only have one 9070 that I've tested so far. I am trying to get another AIB to test. This is an N equals one. So it may work better than what you have. It might be worse, uh, no guarantees, right? So while you could try the final settings that I ultimately get to, the intent here is more to show you how to figure out where to set your card versus having you infer that all 9070s can, can do this because that's certainly not the case. The particular card here is ASUS's Prime OC and this one runs slightly higher than stock power, not immensely higher, at uh, 230 watts. Uh, with the 9070XT, we could just go ahead and drop quite a bit of power and practically see the same performance as a stock, right? But uh, I did do some power scaling benchmarks here to show you the 9070 is at a place where if you drop power, you do lose more performance than most would like to just, you know, flat out lose. For example, running at a 90% power target, you get about 96% of the benchmark score, which uh, it's not too bad. Uh, here with Unigen Superposition, which, you know, some of you, you might be okay with that, but as a reference point, we could drop down to 82% of the power limit on the 9070XT and still get that same 96% performance number. So in, in this scenario, I wouldn't just go ahead and just drop the power as a quick way to make some efficiency gains because we do want to play with the voltage curve a little bit to see how much we can drop the power while still uh, maintaining stock performance, or you may want to, you know, leave the uh, the power the same, but either way, we're going to do something. I'm in the latest version of ASUS's GPU Tweak 3 here, and using Unigen Superposition at the 4K optimized setting, so you could use the exact same suite if you like. Uh, GPU Tweak 3 is the most reliable way to do it so far. I did try the latest MSI Afterburner, which was crashing when I pulled up the VF curve, so there's still no voltage frequency curve here in the, in the March 4th uh, version, but there's enough tools here that we can make some quick improvements and I'll show you. First off, before you start playing with power limits, I would wanna see how much we can offset the voltage without crashing the benchmark. Do take note of your benchmark scores. Uh, this gives you valuable information of how your performance is scaling. It's also important to note that offsetting the voltage in GPU tweak three doesn't lower your power. It's actually lowering the required voltage when referencing a particular frequency. So the whole curve, you're, you're basically undervolting it. And so at equal power, you will be running a higher frequency. It's overclocking at stock power levels because we haven't touched the power slider. And so for this phase, you should start seeing better scores. Go ahead and keep the power limit at 100%. First, I went minus 50 millivolts, ran superposition, then minus 110, ran it again. It actually crashed at minus 150, so I dialed that back up to minus 130, and that gives you a rough idea how much you can offset the voltage. Although when you later reduce your power, you can, you know, maybe able to dial that back down a little bit, but this gets us into the ballpark so that we can start playing with the power. You may be able to get more of a negative offset than I was, so I just go, keep going until you hit instability and then dial it back up a little bit. So this way there's a performance bump at the same power limit, it's actually perfectly fine to do this if uh, what you want is extra performance at stock power, just, you know, leave it. 
or at this point you can go further and move up the power limit if you want more performance at more power so that's you know how i was able to overclock this to match the 9070 xt previously but in this specific tutorial we're going to go for stock performance at reduced power so uh, your typical undervolting scenario so now we want to limit the power to the card while staying fixed at the minus 130 millivolt setting then i just started dialing down the power limit first 95 percent let's check the score still seeing higher than stock we can keep going uh, 90 percent still higher and by the way if you're happy with any of these power levels you can stop at any point it's totally fine if you want a mix of lower power slash more performance go ahead have at it but uh, finally at 84% is where the performance ended up being more or less the same as the stock score. Quick check on the clock speeds, pretty similar versus the stock speed, so all good here. Uh, one thing I mentioned earlier, you can see about dialing down the voltage offset some more. For example, I tried going back down to minus 150 millivolts. While it was not unstable at this reduced power level, there was not much of an improvement here either. So minus 130 seems like a perfectly fine spot. Go ahead and save your profile at this point. Just do what you normally load the GPU with, game with it, see if things are stable enough for you. Personally, I think that with GPUs, if it works without hiccups for the title or applications you play or use, then I'd be comfortable just leaving it that way. You can, of course, run Furmark or something like that if you, if you want to, it's up to you. But uh, in the end, I could run more of an offset with this card versus the 9070 XT that I tested. That's purely silicon lottery at play. The improvement with this particular setting is about 37 watts. So running at 193 watts versus 230 watts stock, it's uh, pretty good if you're looking for improved thermals. So at 193 watts, the car ran about a degree cooler versus stock. But the kicker is this was at 200 RPM lower on the fan. So only a thousand RPM here, which is a very, very quiet. So yeah, great card out of the box. Still plenty of benefits uh, for doing some tuning. So hope you found this helpful. Please give a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one.